good morning students welcome to sai ca coaching center and this is ca ms swaminathan with you students in furtherance to what we have learned till now let us move on with the next part of the syllabus in today's session let us look at the second concept which deals with group grouping machines into working cells c e l l s now what does this imply in the organization in the manufacturing uh, plant the factory uh, the factory would be organized into multiple working cells meaning there would be different kind of rooms which will be there a number of rooms and within each room or a cell uh, probably each of these five machines will be installed to manufacture our product these machines will typically tend to be small in size as well so as we learned earlier an operator is assigned to each cell so he handles the five machines which will be working in synchronization so when the manufacturing starts unlike the traditional days when probably 5000 items will be produced by machine 1 and then will be taken to machine 2 then to machine 3 to machine 4 and to machine 5 now what happens is the operator will actually process one item in machine 1 once it is processed in machine 1 he carries the particular item to machine 2 which will be processed by machine 2 then he carries it to machine 3 then to 4 and then to 5 and then it's a final product now the advantage is imagine if these machines are going to be physically far apart then unnecessary movement of people which we learned will happen materials handling will also cost will also be more because you have to travel a long distance now here all the machines are available just next to him and therefore he can pick it up and immediately drop it into the next machine for it to be processed the automatic advantage also is the moment he picks up the output of machine 1 that worker or the operator being an expert is expected to know whether that item is defective or not so upon his investigation if he identifies that that particular output is defective why would he want to go ahead with the production in machine 1 because he knows the next one is also going to be out defective unless the defect is rectified this helps the jit in a very big way you do not carry on with production with mere production and then add to your number of defects and later identify the defects and rectify them and incur a huge cost here you try to identify it instantaneously fix it up and then move on so that's a very big advantage that is available an unnecessary inventory piling up automatically drops now the kanban and the machine cell concept both must be used a hand in hand they should not be used uh, as a mutually exclusive concept okay so understand that it is very important for the jit environment to succeed that employees of the organization are trained appropriately to be able to handle this new requirement therefore the top management must be one who believes in creating with awareness and is willing to invest a huge amount of money on employee training expenses such that the employees are made to feel that they are responsible people who are expected to take decisions right in the cell itself if they want to stop the manufacturing because of the defective component existing there it is their right they don't have to wait for anyone to inform them now another a uh, ripple effect of this in terms of an advantage is in the past as in you see in terms we have learned standard costing system whereby a lot of variances are being identified labor related variances now just imagine what would be the utility of actually identifying any labor related variances which involves lot of data gathering paperwork a lot of paperwork will be required to gather inputs to be able to conduct the variance analysis now after having collected all the data and then when the variance analysis is done it is virtually after the month end which means you are only doing a post mortem analysis and not a live analysis it's not a surgery now how much of significance will management want to place on that piece of information in the historical days they had no alternative and therefore well they welcomed it but now look at it 
the operator right in the cell itself fixes the defect rectifies it and then moves on so that issue is killed then and there okay now why would the management be interested in knowing what is the variance analysis which happened one month earlier it is meaningless data to it because by that time they will be handling the current problem in the current one therefore even from an accounting perspective a lot of uh, work gets reduced from a variance analysis perspective by introducing jit okay uh, remember that supply chain management has to function absolutely well that's when jit will function okay now in those boxes that we saw there was one item which dealt with the last item processes in which company alters its supporting accounting system uh, and i said to you i will discuss about this later now comes the point because of the introduction of jit what's the impact in the accounting systems now look at it this way in the jit environment we have understood it is nothing but a pull model as and when demand arises production is kick started so the information will be relayed by us Uh, from our production systems through electronic data interchange to the suppliers who may be elsewhere and automatically they start manufacturing for the purposes of delivering the items to us now in the in the good old days the production used to happen on a push model basis which meant suppliers were not bothered about what was the actual demand they just manufactured and supplied in huge quantities to us whenever we asked for it now since as and when customer demands keeps uh, popping up you are required to get in touch with your car, with your supplier meaning multiple deliveries will happen by the suppliers throughout the day multiple in probably smaller smaller lots therefore it becomes a big issue for the accounting department to handle multiple lots of probably invoices or paperwork to be analyzed to be categorized accounting to be done and then the payment to be made it adds to a lot of headache to the accounting department so when the um, proponents of this theory thought about this they came up with a very nice solution it is that what is the use in trying to add to the workload of the accounting people let's do one thing instead of actually making them process a lot of work the idea itself is to reduce the work to reduce the paperwork as well therefore the suggestion was that rather than actually having lot of paperwork being generated and processing happening multiple time let us do one thing that the supplier let him continue to keep supplying multiple times a day at the end the supplier will have to be paid for correct now payment is governed by how much has he supplied how can we gather this data as to how much a particular supplier has supplied to me for example if a supplier claims that i have supplied to you 1 lakh units at rupee 1 per unit you have to pay me 1 lakh now instead of tracking each multiple receipt as 2000 uh, in one receipt in one we receive 2500 in another delivery we receive 5000 units i think it will be a huge process to undertake this now instead of going this way what happens in jit is we look at our production system and we rely on our internal mechanisms so our production staff will tell us well in the current month we have actually manufactured for example 5000 units as finished goods now in our intermediate in costing we have learnt a concept called in material management as bill of materials which is nothing but a document prepared by the production engineering department okay a uh, planning department or engineering department listing out all the items that would be required in the appropriate proportion to manufacture one particular output now that is the kind of recipe or formula now if the formula holds good then today when my production department says that we have manufactured 1 lakh units and if the bill of material prepared by the engineering department lists that for each unit of output you need 20 units of input now i have 1 lakh units of output divided by 20 i need 5000 units of input correct similarly if the supplier is claiming to me that 1 lakh units has been supplier supplied 
okay i i'm very sorry uh, i said one unit requires uh, output requires 20 units of input correct which means if the supplier claims that he has supplied 1 lakh units my output should be 5000 units not the input so if my output is 5000 supplied by my production department i know that 5000 finished goods multiplied by 20 must be must be the quantity which is the supplier has sent so it exactly tallies why do i need to keep a track of the individual invoices sent by the supplier saying i supplied to you today 23 units the next day 47 units i don't need this is all nonsense to me non value adding per steps to me i can straight away calculate using 5000 times 20 1 lakh units and pay my supplier at the appropriate time now one issue arises here what if the supplier is not going to be paid appropriately for example in our production system if there is some scrap item now that scrap will not figure in your output which is 5000 suppose 100 units have been scrapped a scrap cannot get generated unless the input was fed input meaning the supplier has supplied to you so the production department is going to inform the accounts department that only 5000 was produced this month and not 5100 including the scrap then the risk is we will calculate for 5000 into 20 1 lakh units has been purchased and pay the supplier accordingly whereas we should be paying the supplier 5000 finished goods plus 100 scrap units which also requires 20 units per unit therefore 5100 into 20 is equal to lakh and 2000 units have been supplied and pay him accordingly point number 1 point number 2 if you miss out on scrap or if the production department feeds in wrong data inaccurate data in terms of finished goods or scrap please bear in mind the inventory related information that gets relayed through edi will also be wrongly sent to the supplier and wrong supplies will happen therefore if there is going to be garbage in which means inaccurate information being fed in that will result in garbage out so that also has to be borne in mind which raises one point uh, requiring our attention that the management must invest a lot of money on training the employees appropriately so that such kind of costly errors do not crop up thereby uh, probably resulting in the git itself becoming a complete waste okay now let's move on from there on to your page eat and all you will find there are some main features of git one is material handling cost will get reduced labor idle time gets reduced um, the defects get uh, rectified immediately or as quickly as possible the company responds to the customers demand quicker correct and so on and so forth the quality levels also increase now what are all those essential elements which should be required prior to installing a jit system the prerequisites a low variety of goods meaning um, more of homogeneity vendor reliability obviously supplier must be one who should be able to supply to you on a timely basis the right quality the right quantity good communication in terms of the edi etc demand stability the customer demand should be fairly stable a uh, tqm which is total quality management which we will see a little uh, we've already seen and defect free materials uh preventive maintenance i guess these are okay uh, let me move on from here to the next point therefore the impact of jit would be on three different components one are uh, the wastage related cause obviously for reasons explained above we don't need to touch it again it will drop significantly overhead cost like materials handling unnecessary transportation of people will all drop and therefore overhead cost will also drop inventory carrying cost will drop because of lower inventory levels being maintained correct uh, obsolescence loss etc will also drop and therefore from a product price perspective you might be able to charge a more effective price to the customer and thereby enjoy good profit margin and also a higher market share possibly because of the higher quality that is being now delivered to the customer probably a premium can as well be charged if possible then are uh, the performance measurements in uh, jit system one of the key measurements in the traditional system is machine utilization 
I have explained this concept to you earlier. Uh, meaning in the traditional days, the emphasis used to be on utilizing a machine more and more and manufacturing more out of that machine because of the huge capital investment involved. Whereas now I said that is not the concept. Uh, therefore, the bad setup time can also be brought down by analyzing and uh, removing all those non-value non adding steps in the bad setup. So bad setup time is reduced. Therefore, there is no necessity to operate the batch for a long duration. Short duration batches can as well be run. Therefore, customers' demand can be met as and when required and of different sizes. So adaptability also improves. The second point, another inappropriate measurement is any type of piece rate tracking for each employee. Now, in the good old days, piece rate of remunerating employees used to exist, whereby we have seen in intermediate that employees are rewarded more and more when their efficiency is higher, correct? Which meant that employees were being encouraged to manufacture more and more. The fundamental goal was in the traditional system, make a, a worker work more and more and produce more and more. But in the JIT system, it's diametrically opposite to that. You are not interested in the quantity because that will result in unnecessarily piling up of inventory and associated costs. So here you are more interested in ensuring that the quality improves rather than just the quantity. So keep supplying goods as and when it is demanded by the customer. The third point, any type of direct labor efficiency tracking is highly inappropriate in a JIT system. I guess this is fairly uh, self-explanatory point, which I have already explained before. Fourth one, installing a JIT system does not mean that there should be a complete elimination of operational measures. Certain concepts like your inventory turnover ratio, etc. Uh, will still continue to operate. You don't need to remove it. An inventory turnover ratio will witness a huge improvement. Slow moving inventory would all have got converted uh, into fast moving. Uh, the reason is not because of more demand. The reason is because of lesser inventory levels now being maintained. Okay. And then the setup time is also being reduced in the JIT environment. Customer complaints will have to be handled in a very sensitive manner. Why? With the introduction of JIT, the objective itself is to enhance customer satisfaction to unprecedented levels, which means you don't want to have defects existing there. In such a situation, if customer complaints arise, one must take it up very seriously and go back and fix the issue so that it does not result in a recurring problem. Scrap. Well, scrap related items will also be brought down significantly because Defective items are being identified by the operator immediately within those working cells and therefore scrap related uh, expenses also will drop significantly. Cost of quality, obviously, if we want to ensure that quality must be maintained at a high level, the preventive cost or the cost of conformance will obviously shoot up, but the benefits will far outweigh the costs. Then there is a customer service. And the ideas generated, which is a very important point. In a JIT environment, we are more interested in trying to encourage each employee at different levels of the organization to throw up different, different ideas to help the organization improve the overall quality of the product. Therefore, one yardstick that could be used in the organization is how many ideas are being thrown up, how many of them have been implemented, and therefore, remunerate probably or reward your employees even based on uh, how many of their ideas are getting implemented, which will give them a moral boost and also a recognition that they are part of the organization. Now, the next concept in JIT is back flushing. Now, this is nothing but your pull model related concept. As I have already explained to you, uh, when we spoke about the accounts department, the demand from the customer will kickstart machine 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This is called back flushing. And if data is misfed, it will result in complete inaccuracies in all parts of the system. And the accounts department also pays the invoices based on the bill of materials, etc. So back flushing is nothing but the pull model function. Movement in the reverse order. Now, um, page 12 refers to certain things like 
there are some serious problems with the back flashing system that must be corrected before it works properly one is production reporting scrap reporting uh, which i have already explained earlier lot tracing this concept refers to if you are manufacturing an output you want to know that uh, which is the which is the particular input that has been used to manufacture this particular output so you are trying to establish the input output connectivity now why would this be required this is required in some industry let me give you an example if you have read the newspapers over the recent past you might have noticed in some cases that automobile manufacturers sometimes uh recall automobile their cars that have been manufactured in a particular year of a particular model they recall it and tell the dealers get the cars back because they were defective how are they able to tell this it is because of the lot tracing a particular lot of raw materials used to manufacture a particular lot of finished goods uh, if this connectivity can be established and post to manufacture if it is identified that the particular output in that particular lot has a defect a risk then all the cars of that particular lot might be having a similar problem and therefore all the cars of that particular raw material lot must also be related to to identify who supplied it so lot tracing is very very important if required but then a lot of money will have to be invested in the system to be able to provide that feature inventory accuracy also i have explained to you in the past now moving on from here we touch the concept of kaizen costing on your page 16 now what is this kaizen costing all about it's a very simple concept which only looks at continuous improvement in the organization enhancing the quality to be delivered to the customer so be it any type of process in the organization continually keep trying to improve now one fundamental difference between kaizen costing and your business process reengineering which we will be seeing a little later in this chapter is bpr business process reengineering analyzes and reengineers a process in a big way as a one time measure whereas in the case of kaizen costing it is a continuous process meaning whenever something is done continuously probably in all uh, fairness the extent of qualitative improvements that might be suggested will be only minimal but then uh, repetitively when it is being done every day when something some improvement is being introduced uh, in in a very small way in totality it might add to lot of value just as we also understand small drops of water make up a mighty ocean so instead of actually having to do something one time only in a very big way small things done continuously can add and contribute to a significant uh, measure in our organization look at your own study just try not to study for 6 months and then sit and study huge amount of uh, work will have to be done and quantum of uh, study will have to be done whereas every day if you keep studying your progress will be consistent and you can also continue to do only a small portion every day that's what fundamentally is the difference between your kaizen costing and your ppr now kaizen costing or a strategy also involves team work from different types of employees at all levels of the organization now the principles underlying kaizen costing are also very similar to the jit i leave it to you for self study uh, it's very self explanatory fundamentally it rests on team work okay and suggestions being given by all workers at different levels and uh, empowering employees to take decisions then you move on to page 19 which contains a certain thing talking about the 5s principle now what is this 5s it's a japanese concept and therefore has some japanese terminologies five of those japanese terminologies it is if you read the first line it says 5s is the name of a workplace organization method that's all so it is nothing but workplace meaning the area where you do your work organization try to organize that place okay for which you need a method 
This is all about the 5x. Now, it has some terms like Seri, Satan, Seizo, Siketsu and Shitsuke. You can understand it. I would just like to give you an example, real type example. You can apply this when you read it. Now, if you look at the English meaning of it, the uh, five terms mean first thing you have to sort things out, two, set it in order, three, shine, four, standardize and sustain. Now, let me just ask you a question. Just let us enter our kitchen and suppose the kitchen is not kept in order. Something has been cooked yesterday night and today morning when we enter the kitchen, whatever was cooked has not been cleaned and everything is scattered on the dais of the kitchen. Now today if you have to start cooking, what is it that you would do? Just think about it. Kitchen is the workplace. Will you not want to organize the workplace first? Will you not want to first sort out whatever is not required from yesterday's item, whatever is required? Then, will you not arrange things in order? Okay, like in your storeroom. Will you then first not clean the place before you start cooking the next day? Will you not do it daily? Okay, and then once you learn from this, would you not want this to be adopted and practiced daily on a sustainable basis? This is exactly what is being spoken about through this Japanese concept. So I leave it to you to read it and apply this. Okay, now on page 22, we have something called total productive maintenance. Now what is this concept of total productive maintenance? The phrase is very clear. Uh, in the production plant or the factory, there must be maintenance done in such a manner that it is a holistic approach. End to end, everything must be properly maintained and um, planned for. The steps that are involved, or the phases that are involved in the total productive maintenance are four. One, preparation stage, where the management will basically have to create an awareness in the minds of the people, the employees, that this is something which is very important and we are serious about it. And then there is an introduction stage where total productive maintenance related concepts are applied. Uh, who would be our suppliers because we need to ensure the right quality gets delivered. Okay. How would we add value? The implementation stage and then wherein you practically uh, go ahead and operationalize it. And then uh, the reward reaping stage. Now, um, I would actually want to stop here and probably pick this up in the second session. So best of luck. Let's meet in the next session tomorrow.